this is Ginger Snap, a conversation and a cookie with a creative mainer. I am here in Woolwich with my friend Melinda Baxter, who's an integrative nutrition coach and a lot of other things that she's going to tell you about. You've got a really cool retreat coming up. And uh, so tell everybody about your work and your retreat. Yeah, so I'm an integrative nutrition coach. I went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, hence that name. I'm also a master life coach and yoga teacher and massage therapist. You know, I feel like my work is all about... Um, helping people find their best self and mm -hmm. that was kind of um, what happened for me growing up came here to school and came, came to hide as a teenager and no belief in myself and the people there deeply believed in me mm -hmm. when I didn't have any belief and so I feel like that's that's what I'm paying back into the world through my work mm -hmm. is being that champion being that person for other people to really see their best self and begin to bring that to the world more so the retreat that I'm offering on October 18th in Freeport, um, it's a day-long retreat for women, Sunday, and it's all about that. It's all about integrating the self. So we often go through our lives betting on one part of ourself that feels mm -hmm. most um, comfortable and that we feel like we have a natural ability in or whatever it is um, that we feel confident in that part and then the other parts right. maybe get um, stowed away or castigated in some way. So the retreat's really about integrating of the whole self and mm -hmm. tapping into your dream, your vision for yourself and really leaving mm -hmm. the retreat feeling a deeper connection to it and, uh, um, and some goals around it. Mm -hmm. Wow. How can people find out more about it? Is it you have a website? I yeah, I do have a website. Uh, the retreat isn't up on that because I'm in transition of changing websites. My website is melindabaxter.com, but if you want more info, you just email me at melinda at melindabaxter.com and I'll send you the flyer and it has all the info mm -hmm. there. Terrific. How, um, how many places do you have? Available? I have 15 left. Okay. So 20, awesome. is, 20 is the limit. Okay. All right. Great. Sign up for that. That sounds great. So, Melinda, you um, you grew up, I think, in Pennsylvania, yeah. right? So, what brought you to Maine? So, did Hyde bring you to yeah. Maine then? That's well, I went to a camp time. here as a kid. Um, so, I went for about three or four years in freedom. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, my real connection and sort of deeper roots in Maine came from spending four years in high school here mm -hmm. in Bath. Yeah, that's great. I, I mean, I knew you were involved with Hyde. I think I thought you taught there. And I didn't realize you were a student there. Yeah, I did that's teach there, too. Yeah, yeah. you taught there, yeah. too, later. Yeah. I, I love I love that place. I've done, as you know, yeah. a little bit of the work with the, the songwriting program there with Matt Newberg, and it's really it's a it's an incredible place and great students. And, yeah, um, it's a phenomenal place. Yeah. So, um, do you know your first word, Melinda? My first word mm -hmm. that I spoke. Yeah. Oh gosh. And if you don't, do you know what it might have been? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Um, I, the only thing I can remember my parents saying that I said was Flutterby for Butterfly, but I'm sure it's in my baby book, you know, whatever mm -hmm. I said first, which is probably Mama, like mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, my first word was cookie, which is uh, one of the reasons I love cookies. Oh. And um, we have a cookie. Uh, it's a gluten-free peanut butter and uh, chocolate chip from May's Cafe and Bakery. So we're going to try a little bit right now. Awesome, because mm -hmm. I'm gluten-free, so... She's accommodating my be. dietary needs. <laughs> right, exactly. And Lisa should be. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. mm. That's pretty good for gluten-free. <laughs> well, they just use peanut butter. Mm -hmm. There's no gluten-free flour in the peanut butter mm -hmm. cookies, so they don't taste weird if people mm -hmm. don't like the gluten-free mm -hmm. flour taste. Mm -hmm. That's mm. good. That is great. Mm. So thank you, Mays. Thanks for those. Um, so, Melinda, do you have a... Um, a book that you have recommended most often in the last couple of years? Hmm. <clears throat> well, yeah, I would say um, it's Louise Hay's You Can Heal Your Life, which I've taught in a program I run a couple times a year called um, the 30-Day Mind-Body Makeover. Mm -hmm. So it incorporates my Whole Foods cleanse that I run and then this um, spiritual mindset work mm -hmm. with her book is our book. Yeah. What's it called again? You can heal your life. You can heal your Louise life. Hay mm -hmm. is the author. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hay House puts a lot, puts out a lot of amazing books. Yeah, they do. That publishing company. Yeah. So, did you have a uh, car from your childhood that you loved, and if you could get back, you would? I did my first car. I was I was uh, older. My, my I learned how to drive on a just post World War II Army Jeep. My dad mm -hmm. was really into Jeeps, but. So I have a lot of fondness for that car, but my first car that I owned was right when I was graduating from college, so I was a lot older than some when they get their first car. I was living out in Olympia, Washington, and I got a Toyota Corona, 
and it was so much cooler than a Corolla and a far fewer production um, uh, line of cars. And it was just so classic, you know, it just had so much character. Mm -hmm. And I actually named her Iona. I was in Hawaii hitchhiking for a couple of weeks right after I bought her. Mm -hmm. And I was in the back of a pickup truck. My friend was in the front and we were hitchhiking from town back to where we were staying in the mountains. And um, I was staring at the stars and I was so excited that I owned a car because mm -hmm. I really didn't know how that was ever going to come to pass because my parents weren't buying it for me. Right. And I was like, I own a car. Iona, Iona, I think, I think that's an island somewhere. Iona. And I was like, that's her name, Iona. So it was I O N A. It was the I, it wasn't I, you know, I O W N A. You know, it wasn't the sentence, but she that was is, cool. That is awesome, Iona. Yeah. And she had post market, like after market cruise control and wiper delay. So she was like Whoa. a 75 or 6. I mean, this was in 1994, so it was an mm -hmm. old car. Um, yeah, super cool. Living in San Francisco kind of killed her, though. The hills well, yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll kill any car. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so is there, uh, moving on to music, um, is there a song or an album that um, sort of, uh, when you're sort of feeling lost, brings you back to yourself? It's how I asked um, Judd last week or two weeks ago. Well, there are certainly musicians. <laughs> um you know, Bruce Coburn is a mm -hmm. huge soul salve kind of music for me. It's just been with me for a long time. And Morrison's that way, too. Um, I just, there's certain music that um, I've listened to at different times in my life when maybe I was more angsty. And so if I hear that music again, it just brings me back into a time in my life. And I, especially in college, I really, I was just constantly listening to those musicians. And yeah. that was such a profound time. And I was spending a lot of time in the outdoors then, a lot of time in the desert on the rivers, and and so it just it recalls a really neat time in my life that mm -hmm. I just um, I, I love and I miss. I miss mm -hmm. being able to be out in the wild that mm -hmm. way, yeah. um, like I used to be. So yeah, hmm. David Wilcox too. Oh yeah. Hi, David. I know. I can't wait to meet you, David. <laughs> Maybe I'll send this. I'll send this to Nancy. She'll. Show I mean, it I to know you. I'm the only person who you, I have an ultimatum request. I know it. <laughs> Oh my god. All right. So, um, I love this question. Uh, if a movie was made about your life, what genre would it be and who would you like to have play you and who do you think they would cast as you? Well, the easiest, well, the easiest one to answer is who would play me because my whole life I was told I look like Jodie Foster. So she might be just a natural yeah, yeah. fit because um, mm -hmm. it was either, or Helen Hunt uh -huh. is the other combo. one. combo. Yeah. I think a yeah. combo. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> one of those two just for likeness, I suppose. <laughs> uh, it would definitely be, maybe not straight comedy because I do have a really intense side, but comedic for like, I don't know, like a dark comedy or something. Like Woody Allen style. I don't know. <laughs> probably because I love to laugh and I, comedy. Yeah. Yeah. So something along along those lines, I think. An intense good. dark comedy. Yeah, yeah I yeah. can see that. that, yeah. that passion that, that filled. <laughs> a passion filled dark comedy with a combination of Helen Hunt and Jodie Foster. I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So um, thank you so much, Melinda. Uh, and uh, we're here at her home in Woolwich. And um, tell them again how to find out information about your retreat. Yeah, my retreat and also just what I'm up to um, in general, melindabaxter.com and the retreat, melinda at melindabaxter.com. Just email me and get that info. And I would love for you to consider joining us. It's going to be a wonderful day. Yeah. All right. Thanks again. Uh, this has been Ginger Snap. I'm Lisa Redfern. I think this is Ginger Snap number 15 or 16. I should have checked before. <laughs> anyway, it's in the teens and it's very exciting. I have to get the sign right. There we go. All right. This has been Ginger Snap.